Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 8th, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock, jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring, snowing and blowing. It is The Savage Nation. I've always loved this song. It reminds me of light snowflakes walking around Queens, going to school, going to shopping, working in a friend's father's store in Jackson Heights in a clothing store, stuff like that. Taking the Q44A to Jamaica High School, walking up, you know, stuff like that. It just reminds me of that time. It, it was slushy in the street. Don't believe it. I mean, it wasn't paradise. It was grimy. You know, it was black and white New York. But I like black and white New York in that sense. So here are the topics that I'm going to talk about today. Don't let the left kidnap God this Christmas. A cop is... I have a tape that I'm going to play. I'm shocked it hasn't gotten national attention. Of a cop in Mesa, Arizona, executing a crying man. He was brought to trial on murder. He got off scot-free. It is a worse assassination than that of Kate Steinle. I am calling for a federal investigation and a retrial of this cop by the Justice Department. If you watch this tape, you will come away sick and revulsed, angry, and you'll ask yourself, how does a cop like this kill a man crawling down a whole hotel hallway unarmed? The young guy is begging for his life. He has no gun. And this psychotic murderer, this psychopathic killer, this cop, says, if you do anything wrong, I'm going to kill you. If you move your foot the wrong way, if you move the hand the wrong way, I will kill you. And then he shoots him with a machine gun. I've never seen anything like it. So they try the cop, and the cop gets off scot-free. I want a federal investigation. That's topic two. Here's one that's a little more esoteric. You know how critical I have been of this Jerusalem move? Well, you're not going to believe what happened today. Are you ready? Because you're not going to believe this. Dina Powell, you never heard of her. She's the Deputy National Security Advisor. She is the driving force behind the Trump administration's Middle East policy, which I would suspect includes that disastrous imbecilic decision announced today she is leaving the White House. In other words, they realized what a disaster this was, and they're firing her. You'll never see that in the news. They'll never put two and two together for you. But my job is to analyze the news and tell you as a truth teller, this is what happened. Dina Powell, Deputy National Security Advisor to depart Trump White House. This is unbelievable. Unlike some White House officials who were fired or resigned amid controversy, Powell is exiting on good terms with the president, the officials said. Well, that's the official party line. It's not the truth. She was thrown out for pushing this Jerusalem move at the wrongest time in the history of the world. And by the way, I'm shocked that the American media is not showing this to you. There are riots all over the world. People are dying and really being hurt as a result of this disastrous mistake. Uh, it's not being reported anywhere. Rage around the world, Jerusalem riots spread. It's on the Drudge Report, the third story down. There it is, the only place I can find it. Rage around the world. Jerusalem Riots spread to London as Muslim communities all over the planet express fury at Trump's embassy decision. This is the most imbecilic decision I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think I put two and two together. I didn't know who pushed it. I thought it was perhaps the Republican Jewish coalition who went to the Hanukkah celebration last night at the White House. But now I think it's the Deputy National Security Advisor, Dina Powell, who they announced today is getting thrown out or leaving. That's topic three. Now, here's topic four. It's a health topic. It's called gluten news you can use. I'll just leave that hanging. As you know, I have a doctorate in human nutrition from a great American university. I've written extensively on 
nutritional topics. And I have new news about gluten, and I'm calling it gluten news you can use. But let me begin with the first story, which is don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas, which I believe is now up on michaelsavage.com. Underneath that is a picture of my mother. God rest her soul, who died 14 years ago yesterday. And I lit a candle for her. I was very touched thinking about all the good years with her. And uh, I didn't even know it was the memorial for her until late in the night. I'll be honest with you. I would forgotten this so long ago. And you try to forget these days. But I lit a candle for her and I put a little picture up of her in her kitchen in Queens making a soup with me behind her. I had a, a gla- <laughs> glass of wine in my hand. I looked very carefully at that picture in that little Pullman kitchen. That woman could knock out on that four-burner electric stove gourmet meals like I can't get in a restaurant today. I mean, you go in houses in Beverly Hills, Tiburon, California, the Upper East Side. The kitchens are cost a million dollars with the most advanced appliances, and there's a Fig Newton and a bottle of Chardonnay in the refrigerator. Everyone gets takeout. They can't cook. They don't even know what to make on their Wolf Ranges. My mother had this little four-burner electric stove, and she could put out meals. I don't know how she did it, but God bless her. In memory of Mama Savage, her memorial was last night. Those are the good stories. The bad story is down on michaelsavage.com, and I warn you, if you're a, a parent, do not let your child watch this. It took me a while to get the actual video of the Arizona cop as he executes the man who is complying with his order to the T, telling him to crawl down the hallway. He says, cross your legs, put your hands up. The kid does it and starts to cry. He says, if you don't follow my instructions, you will die. He executed this kid. The worst part is the cop got off scot-free. I don't know how. There should be a federal retrial of this cop who should be tried for for murder, first-degree murder. All on michaelsavage.com. Don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas is my lead story. For years, I have urged my radio listeners to resist the onslaught of criticism and pressure by the left to give up the values they have fought to keep. As we draw closer to the Christmas holiday, I remember the Christmas of yesteryear, a time when God was at the forefront of the holiday season. Today, the left has hijacked every last piece of decency in this nation, and a holiday once known for nativities and family has devolved into consumerism and rampant political correction. I implore you and your family to remember God this Christmas. For myself... I decided to give back to God for all he has given me and my family, and I wrote God, Faith, and Reason for God. In this book, I chronicle the glimpses of God I have experienced in my lifetime. All of us have our own unique beliefs about God. And recognizing this, I wrote the following about the question many of us face in our lifetime. Where is God? Well, here's what I wrote. People see God in their own way every day. Some people say they stand on a shoreline listening to the waves pound against the shore and feel closer to God, or they walk on a beach or in a forest. There's that famous song from many years ago, every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky, then I know why I believe. Those are the ways people see communion with the greatest spirit to which we are all connected. After all, what are we? In addition to being the blood, the bone, the vessels, the tissue, we are spirit. And everything we come into contact with resonates on or with our spirit, for better or for worse. We know that some people can bring us down or give us a headache. Some can bring us up. Some can make us happy. Some can make us sad. Some can elevate us. What is that all about? It's about the fact that we're like tuning forks and we resonate with other energy forces. The other energy forces can be other people, a pounding surf, an animal, a dog, a cat, a bird, a cloud. But the ultimate tuning fork in the sky is what we're talking about in this book. How can we tap into that resonance? Some people go to church, and in joining a congregation, they are better able to resonate with the higher power. I remember when I was a young boy, I asked my grandfather, who died long before I was born, this question, where is God? The word came down that my grandfather was not a religious man. You see, I never met him. That he didn't go to a temple to pray. Instead, I was told he could be out in nature with his back to a tree and talk to God. In many ways, the same is true for me today. And that's my article, Don't Let the Left Kidnap God from Christmas. It's in God, Faith, and Reason. And on a purely commercial level, I will note, and this is very strange, that the third week of sales are almost equal to that of Trump's war. The first two weeks were not equal to that of Trump's war, which was a highly political book. 
but then it drops off, as all books do in week three. This one stabilized in week three. So there is a thought that perhaps because the book is about God, faith, and reason, people are suddenly talking about it, and just maybe we can put God back into homes across America. Don't let the left kidnap God from Christmas. Those are the opening stories. That's the opening monologue. The phone number is 855-407-282. I have so much I want to do today, you know. That's another thing I wanted to do, which is we went into the Savage Archives, and I went back to my first year in radio in 1994. And we have tapes from 1994. One is Miss America Deaf Due to Vaccinations. From October 1994, Smith, S- Smithsonian tries to change history of World War II in Japan. From December 8, 1994, Savage says, I'm against new meds for depression. December 8, 1994, study says mammograms may increase cancer. I have all these small sound bites for you. I don't know if I'll get to them today, but these are golden oldies. They're jewels from the past, and you'll get to hear me in 94 and compare the me of then to the me of now. I don't think you'll find much difference. Well, those are the stories. I can also talk about Al Frankenwein if you want me to go back to Radio Kindergarten. We could do Al Frankenwein today and talk about that. And I could tell you he looked like a pumpkin without a candle in it yesterday as he whined his way off the congressional stage. He looked like a pumpkin without a candle. He looked like a pumpkin who still thought it was Halloween when it was already almost Christmas. He looked like a pumpkin who was left at the curb and didn't realize the holiday was over. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, rock, we're going to rock around the clock tonight. But you should ride, ride, All right, Bill, thank you very much. I don't know what he was on, probably hot dogs and uh, Diet Coke. Welcome back to the program. There was no Diet Coke at the time of Bill Haley, so I'm sure it was pure talent and nervous energy. Arizona cop acquitted for killing man crawling down hotel hallway while begging for his life. This is the story of the day to me. It's the biggest story for many reasons. The killing was in cold blood. The cop must be retried by the federal government. Uh, he executed this man who was crying and begging for his life, executed him with a machine gun. And yet, the jurors found the cop not guilty of second-degree murder and reckless manslaughter. It's a shocking story. And what I want you to do is look at the video. It took me a while to actually pull the part up where he gets killed. It's on michaelsavage.com. It's linked there. Arizona cop acquitted for killing man crawling down hotel hallway. If you can watch that video and then call me, I'd appreciate it before you. Don't call me before watching it, please. Oh, by the way, is an interesting side note from the Arizona Republic. The judge in this case did not allow jurors to hear about an etching on the dust cover of the cop's rifle that he used to shoot the young man, which said your FDDF blank, blank, K-E-D. Now, what cop who was not a psychopath would put that on his rifle? What police department would let someone with a rifle that has an etching that says, you're effed on it, stay on the force knowing that the man is probably deranged? Uh, Do we have the time to play the short version of the tape? Okay, I want you to listen carefully, then we'll talk about it on the Savage Nation. Young man, listen to my instructions and do not make a mistake. You are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. You are to put both of your hands, palms down, straight out in front of you. Push yourself up to a kneeling position. I said, keep your legs crossed. I'm sorry. I didn't say this in conversation. Hands Put your hands in the air! Hands up in the air! You do that again, we're shooting you. Do you understand? Do not shoot me. Then listen to my instructions. Put your hands down for any reason. 
Jesus. You think you're going to fall, you better fall on your face. Your hands go back in the small of your back or down. We are going to shoot you. Do you understand me? Premeditated Crawl murder. towards me. Premeditated murder. Crawl towards me! You cop psycho piece of garbage, you. You cop Don't punk. Okay, I've had enough of this. That's the end of the road. If Jeff, if Jeff Sessions does not try this man on federal charges, I'm out. I'm done. You know, I went ballistic on the Mexican who killed Kate Steinle. But I will tell you, watching this video, t this audio videotape of this deranged psychopathic executor in a cop's uniform with a machine gun killing an unarmed man on the ground is the last straw for me. I want a federal civil rights trial for this cop. I don't care whether he was acquitted by a stooge jury in Mesa, Arizona. This is the most egregious example of a cop executing an unarmed man I've ever seen in my life. Now, ha has anyone listened to the... I'm very upset right now because if you listen to the cop's voice, he says, I will kill you. I will shoot you. He didn't say may. He said, I will shoot you if you, if you don't do anything right. He set this kid up to be killed. This cop is a psychopath, in my opinion. This is a psychopath. Anyone watch that tape and have anything to say? Jeff on KSFO line two, go ahead, please. Yeah, we watched this this morning several times, and we were discussing it, and we agree that, that the cop seems to be pretty much a psychopath, but it's number, I believe it's two minutes and 49 seconds. You can just barely see right before the shooting that he reaches back with his arm behind his back and that's when the cop shot him like he was reaching for something now so let me uh, i've heard that excuse before are you a psychopath with a gun as well no not at all in fact i, I want to i want to ask you a question here is an unarmed kid 23 years old in a hotel lobby on the floor of a floor of a hall the cops telling him Put your feet, cross your feet, and crawl towards me. Stand, do this. If you don't do it, I will kill you. He says, I will kill you. The guy's pants were falling off because he was forced to crawl on the on the hallway. He reached to pull his pants up. Tell me why the other brave officer didn't come over and cuff the kid since he could have walked over and cuffed him at that point. Why did the other brave officer stand there and watch the execution? I don't know. I can only say... Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Why do fools fall in love? Why do birds sing so gay? In love with my words of faith. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Let me tell you something about talk radio just for a minute before we get back to the Arizona cop who executed this man crawling down the hotel hallway while begging for his life and crying. This unarmed man begging for his life and crying, and this cop executed him. I believe the cop is a psychopath by what I hear in his voice and by the actions he took. I mean, you tell a guy to put your feet behind you and cross them, and then to crawl down the hallway, and if you make a mistake, I will kill you? Now, if you were under such stress, you wouldn't know what to do. And that's what the cops set him up for, to make one mistake so he could justify executing him with his all-powerful AR-15 semi-automatic weapon. I've never seen anything quite like this naked execution in my entire life. If I had seen this in a third world country, I would say, well, I guess that's what goes on in a lawless nation. And yet he was tried. The cop was tried. And the jurors found him not guilty of second-degree murder and reckless manslaughter? My friends, if Jeff Sessions does not try this man, if Jeff Sessions does not try him in a federal courtroom, I will say all is lost with this administration. Now, let me tell you something about radio, now that I've told you what I believe about this. It will be very, very safe and cowardly for me to tell you I'm not going to not have covered this story. Because... A large proportion of my audience consists of police, spouse of police, retired police. And you would say, well, you're going to offend your core audience. So you say, well, don't do it. I'll just be like one of the um, ham actors on television. Don't cover this story because you'll lose part of your P1. And as far as yesterday when you criticized Trump 
saying he's going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Don't cover that because you'll lose your P1 religious audience who will not like you. So don't cover that. Be like one of the ham actors on television and cover the same stuff every day. Say Roy, Roy Moore, 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 Roy Moore. Just say it over and over again. Just Roy Moore. Keep doing Roy Moore. But you see, I'm a truth teller, the best I can be. That's why I dedicated God, Faith, and Reason to the ultimate truth giver. And so I have to do this story because I watched it. I said, I can't believe what I'm watching. America has to see this. They have to judge for themselves, and they have to demand a federal trial of this cop. I did the same thing with the Kate Steinle murder. Remember her? Remember she was found? he was found not guilty because the jury was stacked? And I said there must be a retrial on the federal charges, and most of you agreed with me. Well, why wouldn't you agree with me on this one? Huh? Why? Because he's a cop, and he's above the law? There are rotten apples in all professions, there are, there are surgeons who are drunks. There are surgeons who cut the wrong nerve and leave people crippled. There are surgeons who cut an artery and kill people. It happens because either they're incompetent or they're drugged up. Well, it's the same in every profession. Here's a clear miscarriage of justice. WABC ARA, ARA, welcome to the Savage Nation Line 6. Go ahead, please. You only know he's not he's unarmed after the fact. If you're the cop there, you don't know what he's going to pull out from his back. That's no okay, argument. I, 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 I've heard that. Let's let's just deal with this cover up for a minute. Did you watch the tape yet? Yes, I watched the whole thing, and I'm going to make my kids watch it. If you don't follow instructions, you get shot. Period. What are you, a psychopath like the cop? Not not at all. Because I've run into a lot of cops. If you give them all the power, and you well, them, hold, hold on, excuse me, sir. Are you a cop yourself? No, I'm not. You would want your child, if a cop says, screaming in that voice, put your feet behind you, cross your feet, get on your hands and knees, crawl to me, stand up, sit down. If you don't listen to me, you will be killed. That's what you think is correct police work? Yes, you have to follow instructions, otherwise you get shot. And I would not be angry if one of my kids was shot. Oh, you're full of crap. I'm serious. You're a, psycho you're a, psycho you're a psychopathic cop. What department are you in? You're just trying to get liberal audience. That's you I'm are a psychopath in a police department trying to cover up an execution. You have no kids. To the cop. You have no kids. I can hear it in your voice. You have no kids. Uh, three kids, 12, 14, and 16. Well, then you, your children should be taken away from you. <laughs> you gotta listen. If you're raising children that to believe that, if you're raising children to believe executing an innocent, unarmed man is just police work, then you're a dangerous man. That's not accurate. That's all. Go watch the pancake makeup men on television. It will confirm everything you just said. Well, he wasn't complying with orders. So this was investigated by a detective. The body camera footage can be seen on michaelsavage.com. The detective investigating the shooting agreed that the poor man who was killed, as he reached behind himself, crawling on the ground crying, was similar to reaching for a pistol. But he said it also looked as though the victim was pulling up his loose-fitting basketball shorts that had fallen down as he was ordered to crawl. The investigator also noted he did not see anything that would have prevented officers from simply handcuffing the victim as he was on the floor. Did you hear what I just said? At this point, this kid was so scared to death. He had nothing in his hands. He was unarmed. He was crawling toward the psycho with the machine gun, with a with a, a badge and a gun. And the other officer stood there and let him be executed. In my opinion, the other officer should be tried as well. And here's another little detail from the detective who, who studied this. Forcing the victim who was executed to crawl toward the police like this, increase the likelihood that the victim would lose balance and make wild movements. And the cops' bizarre orders were probably confusing even to a sober person. Again, the judge did not allow jurors to hear about an etching on the dust cover of the psychopath's rifle, which was used to kill the young man, which said, quote, you're effed, because he felt it was prejudicial. The victim's parents have filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the city of Mesa, Arizona. 
The psycho cop was fired for poor performance two months after the shooting. He is free and walking on the streets. He is a danger to everyone around him, in my opinion. What do you think? Yes or no? WTMA in South Carolina, Tim, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the call. Um, I just don't understand the police department's procedures. I completely agree with you. Um, with the gentleman's hand straight up in the air, if there was a second police officer there, one could have walked over and handcuffed him rather than allowing the man to crawl towards them. No, no. First, the cops says, get on your face. He's with his girlfriend, by the way. They did this to her first, and they removed her from the hallway. She provided provided no resistance. Then they do it to this kid, and he says, crawl on the floor. put your Cross your feet behind your back. Stand up on your hands. Put your hands behind you. Put your hands in front of you. I couldn't even follow the instructions, and I didn't have a gun pointing at me. So the kid makes one mistake and asks him a question and says, don't talk to me. This isn't a conversation. If you make, if you don't follow my orders, I will kill you. Now, I don't understand how a jury could be so stupid as to find this cop not guilty on all, all charges. I cannot understand this. As long as I live, it shows you how perverted our court systems are. And I'll go a step further. You're not going to want to hear this either. But you know what? I'm going to go for broke this week. You don't like me for what I said about Trump's fake tax reform, which screws all of the people who voted for him, especially business owners. You didn't want to hear that because most of you who disagree with me do not own businesses. You don't know you're going to get screwed with the Chapter S. you got no deduction. You're going to pay more. I don't care what you think. My job is to tell you what I think. Then you could agree or disagree. But if I'm going to sit here and just put my finger in the air like those marionettes on television who put their finger in the air and see which way the wind is blowing before they tell you anything, I'm going to leave radio. When the day comes that I have to tell you what I think you want to hear to maintain my high ratings, I will leave radio. I don't need this. I don't need to lie to make a living. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to start today because I didn't start yesterday, and I'm not going to start tomorrow. This cop is a murderer. He's an executioner. Trump was lying to you on the tax plan. It's a disaster for the core that voted for him. And Trump made a huge blunder in, in saying he was going to move the embassy at that time. He set off riots around the Arab world. A disaster. Those are my opinions. I could have said the opposite. I could have sat there like the phonies in the media who say everything Trump does is right. I am the reason Trump is president. I wrote Trump's war because I believed in him. I pushed Trump and I told you the Eddies and the Edettes, the Ediths. I said, if you haven't voted before, go out and vote now. It was I who did it, nobody else. Certainly others supported him, but no one as vociferously as I did. It was I who said to the undecided and the deplorables, take a chance one more time. I know you've been screwed before. Go out and vote for Trump. I know what I said. I wrote Trump's war. I got him elected. And now we're sitting here saying, okay, he's still doing some good things. Good. But when he makes wrong decisions, because either he's making them, or people around him are making them, or lobbyists are making them, or God knows the swamp is making him say these things, it is my obligation to tell you what I think. Otherwise, I will leave radio. Dina Powell, Deputy National Security Advisor, the driving force behind the Trump administration's Middle East policy, suddenly announces today, that she's departing the Trump White House. Suddenly, she was kicked out on her skirt for pushing the Jerusalem decision, in my estimation. Can I prove it? No, I'm not in the White House. I'm an outsider looking in. But I have to come to conclusions as an outsider looking in, not an insider looking out. Okay? And I thank God I'm outside looking in. Because it gives me the independence that I need. So that's what we're talking about. Do we have time to play that horrible tape again at this time? It's a minute long. No, not now. I'm going to play it for you again, the video, just the sound. Now, I want you to listen to the cop's insane voice. I'm an expert on voices. I hear insanity. I hear insanity in his commands. I hear a terrified, insane cop who was looking for an excuse to execute somebody. That's what I hear. And when I come back, I will play it again for you. And I will turn it over to the Savage Nation jury right here on the Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Now, more of the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560, KSFO. Okay, I got to tell you this. Look, uh, I've been sleeping on my Casper mattress for a while. It really is. It's an amazing mattress. I pick it over every other mattress I ever had. It does help me get the best night's sleep ever, ever, ever. And I guarantee you, once you try Casper, you're gonna lo- you're gonna love yours as much as I love mine. And switching to Casper is a no-brainer. It's a higher quality mattress at a more affordable price. You will sleep cool, comfortable every night because the mattress has two high-tech foams, better than the old overpriced mattress you probably have. Casper comes to your home for free, small. How did they do that size box? They'll pick it up if you don't love it and give you back every dime. From its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging to letting you try it for 100 nights in your own home, it's no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. Now, sleeping on a mattress is the best way to try it. We know that. So please put Casper to the test in your own home for 100 nights for free. Go to Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and I will get you $50 off the purchase of your mattress. You heard me right. That's Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and you're going to get $50 towards the purchase of this mattress. Casper.com, terms and conditions apply. Now, it's very hard for me to jump back from um, a commercial endorsement, which I believe in, to this horrible, horrible story that I'm covering. But that's the uh, business that I am in. Arizona cop acquitted for killing man crawling down hotel hallway while begging for his life. It is one thing to read about it. It's another thing to watch the body cam from the cop's helmet that was just released this morning. It's on michaelsavage.com. You can find a reference to it on other sites, but they deleted the actual execution because it's too visual to watch, too awful to watch. At the end of this tape, the kid's crying on the floor, begging not to be killed, and this piece of human trash, the cop, opens up with the machine gun. Not one shot, by the way. Not a handgun, not a baton, not a handcuff, not his other brave cohort they're hiding behind the wall. Shoots him dead with a machine gun. I couldn't believe what I was watching. So you have to watch it yourself. Russ on KSFO, line 9. Uh, have you watched this video, Russ? Yes, I have, uh, Michael. And uh, let me just first say uh, that I agree with you 100%. And let me give you a quick background. I know you were, uh, I know you got a lot of callers. 28 years with DEA. Hmm. Uh, before that, a local uh, officer for a number of years. I've worked with literally hundreds of local, state, federal officers. We've been in many situations like this uh in this particular case uh you had somebody there that could have gone up just like you said M- michael you know police work is common sense uh you have common sense you, you know when you can shoot when you should shoot somebody or not the problem that we have in this country is in a court of law they introduce the the state or the uh the defense will introduce mm-hmm. Uh, uh, expert witnesses that can demonstrate in court that somebody gun within a half a second from their waistband and shoot you. This is this is the this is the problem we have because this is what's swaying jurors. Jurors are sitting in the juror box. They see how quick somebody can pull out a gun and shoot you. They, this is what they demonstrate in court, and this is what uh, the, the the jurors only see, and this is what they only know. So, what other verdicts are they going to come up with? Well, but the kid's shorts were falling off because he was reduced to a to a bubbling mess of tears and fear, and this cop, the psycho, was enjoying controlling him. That, that that's true. Did you listen to his voice of how he commanded him and the sound of the cop's voice? Do you hear a rational officer or a crazy man? I uh, this guy. Listen, there's a there's a few guys that I worked with over the years, over three decades, that shouldn't have guns. That there's no question about that. And Do you agree with me that there should be a federal trial, a civil rights trial against this cop? I think so. I, I absolutely Okay. Think so. 
Uh, I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. Thank you for having the faith and the reason to be a DEA officer for 26 years. Probably one of the toughest jobs in the world. We don't riot and burn things down. We don't break into sporting goods stores. We email Jeff Sessions. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.